Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Middle Earth Monday and this time we are finally getting stuck into The Fellowship. I'm going to be painting up my personal favourite member of The Fellowship which is Legolas. Controversial, I don't know, but as a kid all those flips and tricks he used to do, they really entertained me. So let me know in the comments which one of The Fellowship members is your favourite and that might be the next one I paint up for Middle Earth Monday. But for now, let's get into this video. But before we do, as always, we must thank my patrons for keeping the lights on and the cameras rolling. Without you guys, I would not be able to do what I do. So a huge thank you to you guys. If you're interested in getting involved in my Patreon, there are links to it below. You get extra benefits, such as a private Discord server and extra videos. You get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys. All right, guys, let's get painting Legolas. So this is the fellowship that I'm going to be tackling. It is the original metal fellowship, the first one that ever came out. And I'm going to be doing this beautiful scenic piece that came with the old collectible magazine series. If you got the subscription for that magazine, this is one of those kind of free gifts they gave you. It is the Balin's Tune scene. And every single member of the fellowship has a specific slot they go into. And it sets the scene. They're all pointing in the right directions if the door and the troll is coming through and all that. It's very cool. I've had it for 20 years now, I'd say. And it's about time I think it got done. So... This will be my first fellowship of the channel. There's about seven different fellowships and I own every single one of them. So you may see more fellowships in the future if that's something that interests you. Some of the models have already been painted previous generations and perhaps they required uh, stripping and getting cleaned up so I can add them into the video series. And I think that is probably what I'm gonna do. This is the Legolas that I'm gonna be doing for the first video. He's one of my favorite sculpts because he does not have the elven cloak, which makes him just a little bit simpler, a little bit more sleek and dynamic. Um, and I quite like his silhouette. Like I said, I haven't really cleaned him up properly since I got him whenever he first came out, I think, which was many years ago. So I'm going to clean off some of the remaining kind of flash parts that are on the miniature. And this model actually has a little bit of mold slipping. If you don't know what that is, it's when the two halves of a mold get pushed together, but they're slightly off tilt or so this horrible line going around the entire thing. But I cleaned it up, got the model sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear to give me a really nice starting point. And now it's time to finally, after so many years, get some paint on this model. So I'm going to start with Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast. I've been using this one a lot for kind of natural green tones, uh, Astromel Tarum stuff, Wood Elf stuff. It's all going to work a treat for that kind of color. And I, I find myself reaching for it more and more whenever I need a, a kind of an earthly green tone. I think it's a really nice base for that. And I think it made a pretty good base coat for Legolas himself. So I pulled up a bunch of reference pictures um, on this model and just so I know where all the paint is supposed to go, what's what, where's belt, what's hair, because like the alerts I did last week, some of it's a bit unclear. Um, his two daggers, his quiver, all that bit just becomes this kind of mess on his back and it's really hard to kind of pick out all the different details. Space Wolves Grey was then brought in for the basically the bluey grey parts of the miniature, so his like tights. And then his like undersuit thing that he's wearing. So you can see it through the sides and front of his skirt thing. Um, and then it comes out between his um, kind of forearms and biceps. There's a little bit of cloth there. That's also that kind of blue a bit. So just go in and get a nice base coat on this. Some people have shied away from this with some of the example pictures I've seen. They've gone for like browns and stuff. Which is more the legless green leaf style. But I actually think the uh, hint of blue is really nice as the fact that he is actually royalty. Gore Grunta Fur Contrast was then brought into all of the brown parts, so his uh, buckles, and belts, straps, uh, his bow, quiver, uh, and all those kind of bits and pieces we're gonna hit with the Gore Grunta Fur. Like I said, I've got so many Lord of the Rings miniatures. Like, I honestly think I own about 90-95% of the models that ever got released from Games Workshop. And it is one of my goals in life to own every single miniature that Games Workshop has ever produced for Lord of the Rings. Which is uh, quite a big ask, but we'll see how it goes. So following the brown through on his like uh, leather van braces and all those other bits and pieces. His boots are actually black, so I don't do those with the brown paint if you are following along with this tutorial. And once again, if I could go back to my younger self and show me how easy it was going to be to get a couple of colors on a, a model in the future with these contrast paints, I wouldn't have believed him. Black Templar was then brought in for the boots and the shafts of his arrow as well was also done with the uh, Black Templar paint. Now 
one of the things I will not be doing in this video is actually base the miniature. I know it's quite peculiar for me. Usually I have them by the time the video comes to end, you're looking at a finished ba painted and based miniature. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do is when I do the video on doing the actual base, which will probably be the last section, the actual diorama piece, I'll base all the miniatures the same, blend them all in together so they all sit perfectly into that scene. Gulliman and Flesh was used for, well, surprise, surprise, his flesh, his skin, which is just his face poking through the mane of blonde hair and his two hands. Everything else is covered up. If you pay attention to the you know, Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, the first movie when they're kind of leaving Rivendell, this is what he looks like walking around. It's like, hey, we're going on a like you know two-year journey around Middle Earth. Cool. You gonna pack anything? No. My bow and my knives. Everything else can carry. Everything else is fine. It's like, okay, Legolas, cheers. <laughs> uh, Agros Dunes was used for his hair. It's like a golden yellow color, so it works perfect as a base coat for blonde hair. And also I hit the handles of his beautiful knives. We're hit with this. Be another reason why Legolas is one of my favorite characters. When he got in close, he took out those two sleek daggers and just went to work. It was always so cool. Retributor Armor Gold for the few bits of gold detail that he does have. So he's got two buckles holding all of his leather straps on the front of his body together. And there's some detailing on his bow and on his quiver. Once again, it's so clear in some of the original images what they were supposed to be, but like these models are so old and the old like tin or lead castings, these things are so soft that that detail does kind of get mashed together. So just kind of make it up as you go along. Okay, with all the base coats on, it's time to shade that miniature down. So I'm gonna go for Sarah from Sepia, a nice natural tone, which will work beautiful for all his colors and shade the entire model with it, head to toe, every single part. And if you've watched a bunch of my videos before, you'll know this is usually the time where I would go and base the model. And obviously I'm not going to be doing that now, so bear with me. Okay, with the shade all dry, I'm just gonna go in and layer the model up. So I'm gonna start with his kind of green tunic and I'm gonna go for a two-stage highlight. I'm gonna start with Lauren Forest, just to kind of punch it up a little bit. Add that more natural green tones back in. Push it a little bit away from the brown that the green is now. Like he is Legolas of the Woodland Realm, so what would he be without a couple of nice greens and browns on him? I'm trying to follow the natural kind of high points of the cloth here and leave the kind of uh, deep crevices of the fabric nice and dark, but there isn't really that many deep crevices in this guy. That's why I decided to jump up and do an extra layer of highlight, Nurgling Green, to add a little bit of more contrast myself. And I'm just gonna hit some of the raised parts with this. And that's just gonna add a little bit of depth into that fabric that I think was missing from just the Lauren Forest step. Usually I would just do one stage highlight on things. It's usually my style. But this is the fellowship, come on, they're, they're important. <laughs> they're my childhood. Next, we're gonna jump over to the fang and we're gonna highlight up all those blue parts we did earlier. So a bit on the legs, a bit in where his elbow, I was trying to remember what the, like the back of a knee, the back of an elbow. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> other parts of his cloth. Uh, once that's all done, uh, this is the point where I saw, started to see where the model was going and I was starting to get excited. Once the green and the blue was successfully done on him, I liked what I was seeing and was excited to get Legolas finished up. A bit of Mornfang Brown to highlight all of the wood and straps part. I know technically these should be slightly different tones or colors. Wood and leather are not gonna be the same thing, but like I said, there's a charm to Lord of the Rings miniatures with using a, a kind of a, a small palette of colors. It's what we did when we painted them when we were younger. It's kind of how they were designed to be. And when I play them on the tabletop, I kind of wanna have that same feeling. I don't need to overcomplicate the model with a bunch of different browns. It's time to work on that face. Like the uh, tunic, we are going to go for two stages. So we're gonna go for Cadian Flesh first. And this is gonna be a slightly heavier highlight than um, the second coat. As you can see, I'm hitting cheeks, tops of ears, chin, nose, forehead, all that kind of thing. Not leaving too much of the previous color behind. 
Like I said, it's not as detailed as plastic models these days. So it is kind of hard to spot the natural lines on things. Like I'm painting this the same week that I painted the lion's faces. So that should give you an indication of the different qualities of faces that I've been painting this week. A Kislev flesh was then brought in as the final highlight on the skin. And as you can see, this is just touch highlights on the sharpest points just to make the skin tone really pop and give it that really pallid elf complexion. Zandri just was used to highlight this, the hair, sorry, give him his golden mane. I also highlighted the handle of his sword, and that's basically the same thing I was talking about with the belt and the, the, the wood, the leather and the wood should be different tones. Realistically, the hair and the hilts of his handles should be different colors. I don't think you need to worry about that kind of thing. I think we all have shoe boxes full of dusty old Lord of the Rings miniatures under our beds, maybe left behind in our parents' house. Maybe it's the time to dig them out. Like I said, at some point in the near future, I will be focusing on doing some Lord of the Rings battle reports. And I hope to show you how amazing and how charming the Lord of the Rings miniature game is. It is just the best set of rules ever. A bit of lead belcher was used to highlight all of the gold parts. Just adding a few touch uh, sharp highlights to basically the points of them, the gold parts. Now I'm going to come clean in the edits. I have noticed that I did not do anything to the fletches of the arrows. I forgot that. Uh, that's my mistake. I will go back and paint them now. I can't paint them in the middle of editing though. So I do apologize. So if you do need to do that, you can go back to something like Carrick Stone and just add a couple of white highlights to the fletches of the arrows and fix your arrows better than mine. Okay guys, and there we have it. The first member of the fellowship is now complete. Apart from his base, you may have noticed I haven't done his base. I plan to do the scenic base, plus all the fellowship member bases at the same time. So they blend into each other beautifully. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please take two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. It really does make a huge difference. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around for another Middle Earth Monday. I'll see you next week.